Hi, welcome to the series Learn Excel in 24 hours. In this video, we'll study how to use Excel to calculate interest components, installment values, principal components, interest components. You know, typically when we take a home loan or a car loan or a personal loan, you know, we have monthly installments to be paid, which will have a principal component interest component which are paid in the form of equated monthly installments known as EMIs. In this example, we first put the data headers, principal, interest rate, installments. The principal is the amount that we decide to borrow from the bank. Uh, for calculation in Excel, it is kept with a negative sign. So in this example, we are taking principal as 25,000. So we put the principal as minus 25,000. Whatever is the annual interest rate, we have to divide that by 12 because in case of such loans, eventually the interest is charged on a monthly basis. So in this case, we are taking 14% per annum as the interest rate. So we do equal to 14% divided by 12 for the 12 months. So we get the effective interest rate on a monthly basis. Installments that specifies the total number of installments in which this loan amount would be cleared and we assume that the number of installments over here are 18. Now we need to first calculate what would be the equal monthly outflow, the equated monthly installment. So we put the data headers as EMI which is the equated monthly installment, the principal, which is the borrowed amount, 25,000 in this case. And then there would be an interest component to that. First, we will calculate the EMI. To calculate the EMI, we use a function called PMT. The function PMT has certain input parameters. The first input parameter is the rate of interest. And in this case, we get that from cell D4. Then the number of periods, which is nothing but the number of installments, and we get that from the cell D5. And the principal, which is written as PV, and that we get from cell D3. And once we finish all these parameters, we get the monthly installments in cell D8. So to calculate the EMI, we have to use the function PMT. Input parameters are the interest rate, which is the effective monthly interest rate, the number of periods, in this case the number of months, and the principal, that is the borrowed amount. Now we would like to see what is the actual principal component and the interest we pay over a period of 18 months. So we take the EMI, multiply that by 18, which is the number of installments, and we subtract the principal component from that, and we get the interest paid over a period of one and a half years or 18 months. We would like to double check whether this calculation is okay or not. So come to column I and create something known as double check. The first column over here would be the month number and then we will take it from month number 1 to month number 18. The next column will be interest then another column would be for the EMI and the last column would be for principal. The next column which is the EMI column we have already used the PMT function so we just take a reference to cell D8, make it constant and run it throughout. Now to calculate the interest component in a particular period, we use the function IPMT, which is an extension of the PMT function and the prefix I stands for interest. So for IPMT, the input parameters are the interest rate, the period, the total number of periods and the principal involved. So in this case, the interest rate comes from the cell D4. The period is nothing but the month number, which will come from the values in column I. Then the total number of periods is the number of installments, which we get from cell D5. And the last part is the principal, which we get from cell 
d3 and then as far as the IPMT function is concerned the interest rate is locked with the value in cell d4 so what we do is we lock that by using the dollar sign and making it a constant reference so from d4 we make it dollar d dollar 4 for the period number we just need to keep the column constant so we keep it as dollar i3 for the number of periods it is again constant which is the value in cell d5 so we make it dollar d dollar 5 and likewise for the principal component it is constant which is the value in cell d3 so we take it as dollar d dollar 3 and then we use the drag and drop option so that we get the interest component in each and every period so you can see in the calculation that in the initial part of the installment payments the interest component is higher and goes on decreasing with progress of time then as far as the principal that is the value in column L is concerned it is nothing but the EMI component minus the interest component and then we can take the total of the interest component and the total of the principal component and it will match with the value that we have in the interest component and the principal component and the total outflow so whether it's a car loan whether it's a home loan you can easily calculate the monthly installment to be paid the interest component of that and the principal component of that as long as you know the principal amount the interest rate and the number of installments the only thing is for excel's internal calculations whatever is the principal component it's better that we put it with a negative sign as far as the interest rate is concerned we usually have the interest rate per annum but the payments are going to be on a monthly basis so we have to take the effective monthly rate that is take the yearly interest rate and divide that by 12 and installments is the number of periods for the EMI function to calculate the value of the equated monthly installment the function to be used is PMT and if we want to calculate the interest component in a particular period we use the function IPMT I would encourage you to try and use a few examples by yourselves so that you get familiarized with the same thank you